you join us here at Woking in the McLaren Technology Centre for the launch of the MCL34 and rather than just be looking from pictures all the time to actually have a close-up look at what a 2019 car is going to look like. So as we've done through the whole of this general tech series of launches, let's start at the front wing I guess. So what we can see here is again we've got the five elements here uh, mandated for the 2019 season and as you can see we've got this main plane here that's been split up into two different elements here this is the neutral section here and this is the point where it ends and you can see the curvature in the flap along here now what generally happens here is there is a vortex produced and this drives through the center of the car and all of these elements have been shaped in order to manage that. But we can also see these little attachment points that just keep the wing uh, reinforced and they're slowly propagating airflow outwards and we can see that with the flap adjuster here and the temperature sensor here as well. That's all trying to recoup as much outwash that we've lost over the winter. And we've also got this end plate that's directing flow outwards around the front tire and you can see a very small ridge underneath next to the foot plate and that's just going to ensure that as much airflow is turned into a vortex and pushed outboard. Let's talk about the front nose next because this is a McLaren concept that uh, the team brought in last year and we have it again. It reprises its role and we've got the two slots either side here and in a central snorkel almost in the same fashion that Red Bull have at the front and this is just to ensure that as much airflow is driven under the car as possible. With these low noses it can be very very difficult in order to get that so they use the central section as a crash structure and then these sections here drive further airflow underneath and this leads into a cape section. There are slots either side that Mercedes brought in uh, in, I think it was 2017 when they first brought it in. And again, this is to ensure that as much airflow before the floor is as managed as possible. You can see a lump in the bulkhead here, and that's to reduce the effects of lift when airflow is passing through the center of the car. This is to ensure that airflow takes a longer path and it creates a low pressure zone, which keeps the front end downwards. And you can see the smaller brake ducts there uh, with smaller aperture and less aerodynamic componentry on there. Lower wishbone is as low as it can possibly be. And then we've got the top wishbone, which is attached to a little horn mounting point. Again, that's another Mercedes trick that Toro Rosso also used last year. But as you can see, looking down the barrel of the car, the suspension components are as low as they possibly can be. And that's because our inlets on the side pods are incredibly high. You can see the two crash structures either side of the inlet. And this is uh, a visual cue from something that Ferrari produced in 2017. And a lot of cars, apart from Mercedes this year actually, are using. And this is just to ensure that there is as minimal blockage from the center of the car, from the suspension components as possible. And then we've got these barge boards here. You can see a number of slots on the leading edge. And this is just to ensure that as much airflow is managed as possible going around the floor. And you can see this large boomerang section as well, which is just to manage as much airflow as possible. And this leads into the crash structures here on either side of the inlet and of course the side pod barge boards as well. Um, you can also see twin mounted mirrors. Again, mirrors brought further outboard for this season and that's something that everybody is really trying to do their best to take advantage of. And then moving into the rest of the car, we can see slots on the floor uh, trying to bring as much airflow outside the car and seal the floor as possible. And then you can see the side pods and they're very, very tightly packaged compared to last year. This leads into a very, very tight section of bodywork which folds underneath. You can see just under the Petra Brass logo, that's tightly sealed in as possible. It flares out at the top, that's mainly for cooling purposes. And then looking up at the top of the engine cover, you can see this very, very strange little where the shark fin used to be a couple of seasons ago. There's just a very, very small little flick with the number 55 on it. It's Carlos Sainz's number this season. Such a small amount of bodywork here. People usually utilize larger shark fins than that, but McLaren rather haven't decided to do that. They've instead decided to go for something very, very small. And that just essentially cleans up air before it gets to the rear wing. Uh, the rear wing itself is incredibly uh, complex looking. Uh, you can see the swan neck wing mounts which is a trend that we can see from this year. The DRS activation uh, actuator is 
mounted quite high up and you can see a spoon shape in the central section of the wing. Then there are also the end plate slats as well, which is something that McLaren pioneered a couple of seasons ago and that they're persisting with this year. But there is something very interesting on this car, and this is something we talked about a lot last year, and it's these rear wheels here. As you can see, around the centre of the rim, there are these scalloped sections that are raised, and you can see the wheel is painted black, and that is to ensure as much heat management as possible. But these also help to dissipate heat as well. So what you have here is just essentially a greater uh, surface area, and that ensures that they're able to manage the rear end tire temperatures, get the power down when they need to be, and be able to use as much of the engine performance as possible without sliding around or losing any tire performance like that. So here we have this very, very tightly packaged rear end. It's very, very complex. You can see the exhaust elements here. A couple of teams have angled this upwards, um, and that's usually to try and blow the rear wing, but McLaren are doing no such thing here. And you can see the wastegate tailpipes either side of that. And you can see some very intricate diffuser work as well. We've not had a look at a diffuser in 2019 yet, but we've got some very, very intricate pieces of winglets here, and that's to ensure that airflow is managed as much as possible coming off the back of the car and reducing drag as much as possible and also trying to take advantage of as much space as possible for rear end downforce and the suspension components as well have been shaped in order to manage flow downwards onto the top of the diffuser and create a high pressure zone and you can see these strakes under here as well this is to ensure that vortices are produced which is able to pull airflow around into a wonderful vortex and just ensure that there's as much low pressure under the car as possible and you can see these intricate little flow conditioners as well and that again is just to ensure that this point here on the diffuser that's the point at which the lowest pressure happens as the diffuser opens up and that's just to ensure that as much airflow is attached as possible and it's able to be pulled out under the floor. They're trying to keep as much of it as secret as possible. Uh, I hope that this has been an enjoyable look and it's been brilliant to have a full look at a 2019 car.